1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6 through 21. I have applied all these things to myself and Apollos for your benefit, brothers, that you may learn by us not to go beyond what is written, that none of you may be puffed up in favor of one against another. For who sees anything different in you? What do you have that you did not receive? If then you received it, why do you boast as if you did not receive it? Already you have all you want. Already you have become rich. Without us, you have become kings. And with that you did reign, so that we might share the rule with you. For I think that God has exhibited us apostles as last of all, like men sentenced to death, because we have become a spectacle to the world, to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are held in honor, but we in disrepute. To the present hour we hunger and thirst. We are poorly dressed and buffeted and homeless. And we labor, working with our own hands. When reviled, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. When slandered, we entreat. We have become and are still like the scum of the world and the refuse of all things. I do not write these things to make you ashamed, but to admonish you as my beloved children. For though you have countless guides in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. I urge you then, be imitators of me. That is why I sent you Timothy, my beloved and faithful child in the Lord, to remind you of my ways in Christ, as I teach them everywhere in every church. Some are arrogant, as though I were not coming to you, but I will come to you soon, if the Lord wills, and I will find out not the talk of those arrogant people, but their power. For the kingdom of God does not consist in talk, but in power. What do you wish? Shall I come to you with a rod, or with love in a spirit of gentleness? What the Corinthians were imitating were the worldly aspects of seeking power and prestige by seeking to align themselves with the people of high esteem. This was often seen in the early Greco-Roman society, where people sought highly esteemed individuals such as Aristotle or Socrates and be a part of their school, and such connections would place the individual in high esteem also. Although they had become followers of Christ, Corinthians were still partaking in worldly ways and desiring more public recognition. Yet Paul is asking the members of the church to not follow the ways of the world, but the steps that God's people, such as the apostles, have taken. Paul is exhorting the Corinthians in such a manner because he wants them to imitate how he lives for Christ. That is why he is writing this letter to them, not in stern anger, but in love and gentleness. In the second letter to the church of Corinth, Paul again gives an explanation to why he wants the church to follow in the steps and boasting of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22 to 31. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they offspring of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am a better one. I am talking like a madman, with far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless beatings, and often near death. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews the forty lashes less one. Three times I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked, a night and a day I was adrift at sea, on frequent journeys, in dangers from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, in toil and hardship, through many a sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure. And, apart from other things, there is a daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches. Who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is made to fall, and I am not indignant? If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus, He who is blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. Paul was always able to boast about many things, but he only wanted to boast about one thing, that God was glorified in his weakness. This is the obedience Jesus has shown us on the cross. Jesus did not come in a shining armor with hundreds of soldiers beside him. He came as a humble servant, even though he is the creator of the universe. 
This is the power of God that Paul speaks about. For in our weakness, God is made strong. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 and 10 says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The path that leads to eternal life is not paved with decorated stones adorned with praises of men, but is a bumpy road of hardships where we are constantly exposed to our weaknesses. But this is where God's power is revealed through us as we obey and be faithful to His guiding in our lives. As we meditate on today's passage, let us not imitate the world by seeking worldly fame or prosperity, but let us seek Christ and boast in how He is glorified in our weakness.